Well, Ed and Steve, thank you very much for joining me this weekend up here at the Ultimate Reloader Outpost. Thank you for inviting us. Yeah, we had a, that was a great day at yeah, the range. It really was. We really um, enjoyed it. It was a treat. In fact, you know, we've heard a lot about these Ruger Precision Rifles. Mm -hmm. This is the first chance to actually get behind not only one gun, mm -hmm. but two in two different flavors of caliber. And for me, the first time to actually come to the Wenatchee range. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, and 6.5 and 243, and we took them out to 1,000 yards. I mean, it was terrific. Yeah, North Central Washington gun range is a great place to do the shooting because of all of the different distances. We were shooting from that one perch. We had all those, you know, all those options. I was happy because it took me, you know, after a really rough, quick 100-yard side in it took me three shots to get on the smaller, like, 8x8 eight eight at six six. 100 yards and then it was another three shots to get uh, onto the IPSC target at a thousand yards and then I had no problem at a thousand yards with getting three successive hits yeah. on it, even in the varying winds. Yeah and so, the wind was kind of switchy what did you think of that? That was tricky you know this is this is further out than I'm used to shooting I haven't shot out to a thousand yards you know I haven't had the opportunity to yet and yeah. I just I just joined over there you know, I can go to about 400, 500 yards here at the Ultimate Reloader Outpost, but uh, the wind becomes a lot more of a factor, as you guys know, and that's a lot more fun. The shooter app, you know, I have for my for my phone has amazed me, you know, with how accurate it is when you get your, your sight height and your rate of twist and your feet per second and your ballistic coefficient, your, you know, baseline range. I've had it where the, the first time I used it over there, it was off by about six inches at 600 mm -hmm. yards with just initial data, so. Yeah, and more than likely that six inches was attributable to a bad variable being input. <laughs> right. So. Yeah. So, so, so clearly before you, you went out today, there was probably some mystique, you know, about shooting at a thousand yeah. yards. Now you've done it with, with relative ease. So, yeah. so what, what do you think now? Well, it helps to have the right tools. It's a lot of fun, though. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you can't really, you know, quantify what it's like until you actually do it. Yeah. Now, you did it with this. Right? Yeah. So uh, there's a lot of value here. And for the guys that wanted to get into the precision game, uh, Ruger's come up with a pretty compelling value proposition. Mm -hmm. uh, you could be into the sport for a thousand bucks plus, you know, the cost of an optics. Yep. And there's a lot to like here. You know, yeah, there's a lot of other options out here, but when I look at here, there's no really kind of big deficiencies in terms of things that must be upgraded. Mm -hmm. You know, everything from a you know, nice, smooth bolt manipulation, short throw lever, um, pretty decent trigger, mm -hmm. um, you know, fully, fully adjustable butt stock. Um, and I kind of like the styling, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's all about function, and that's yeah. what, I, what I like about it. And I like the fact that uh, it's got great ergonomics and ergonomics that you can easily change in terms of length of pull, the cheek weld, height, and they lock down, you know. Uh, some, of these, some of these butt stocks that have kind of manipulations and adjustments, they're gonna be rattly. That's just, yeah. you know, that's the bolt rattling. And this, this guy is, is nice and solid. It's got a nice thick, you know, pad on the end of it. Mm -hmm. It's got the Picatinny rail, so you could put a bag rider on there. You guys were talking about liking the sloped profile. I'm wondering yeah. if you could put something like that on there. I'm, I'm sure you could. Well, you got this, you know, AR style uh, extension off off this um, tray. So you should be right? able to, so you yeah. Could, should be able to put an AR compatible um, buttstock on this. Yeah, I mean, I would say the only in six five Creed more. I would say the only must have that the rifle would need to be actually shootable, mm -hmm. not just. A nice to have in a is, match environment. Yeah, in a match environment is, is you'd really need a muzzle brake because without a muzzle brake, it's it's really hard to stay on target and and, spot and to your spot shot. your shot. Okay, so yeah. question for everyone then: you got three to five hundred dollars to spend. On the you've rifle? already well, you've already you've already put the money into the optics. Let's say that and and the rings or the mount or whatever. Beyond that, are you going to spend the money on the rifle? Or are you going to get accessories? Are you going to get other related gear? What where would you put your money? So. Uh, it, Assuming you've got the the Harris bipod and, mm -hmm. and you've got the, the the swivel type bipod, I would definitely get the pod lock on there. That's a that's a twenty dollar investment. Yep. That, I did that, that. It's worth its weight in gold. Yeah, that that just pays pays huge dividends. 
but outside of the the muzzle brake, which, which I mentioned, and, and Steve, you said it too, there's nothing with this rifle that's glaringly deficient. So I would take the balance of the money, mm -hmm. and if I wasn't reloading, I would seriously consider making my initial investment in reloading equipment. Yep. That, that That's yep. where I would go with the balance of the money. Because this rifle deserves good ammo right yes. it's it the, the system is there yeah. and you really need to reload well, you won't, yeah you won't get the accuracy out of the rifle without accurate ammo yep so yeah that's number one and so i would answer the question um possibly different you know depending on where i am now in my journey as a precision shooter i already have a lot of the accoutrements and stuff that are necessary i think to enjoy long-range shooting and compete in matches, right? So you're going to need a laser rangefinder. You're going to need support bags and, and slings mm -hmm. and so on, right? Now the answer is very different for somebody that would buy this as a, yeah. as as a rifle to come into the sport, yeah. right? So from that perspective, I agree with you. You're going to want a good bipod. You'll probably want the pod lock. Um, number one is you're going to want to learn the fundamentals, and that takes ammo, right? So yeah. you're going to end up making an investment in ammo. Or if you reload um, in the in the reloading equipment necessary, and that's basically your budget spent. Mm -hmm. But in order to get good, you're going to have to practice. Yep. Um, number one, two, you only have two magazines. I find it good to have several, mm -hmm. so I'd want to put one there. Totally agree with the muzzle brake. Um, great investment if you're going to go six five Creedmoor in the two forty three. You did not, not need it. Yeah, you not did not necessary. need that muzzle brake. Yeah, yeah, definitely, mm -hmm. you did not but need that. But it might be nice to have. I mean, taking a soft recoiling gun and making it almost zero. You know, I have a brake yeah. on one of my Air fifteens, and it's it's awesome. Mm -hmm. It almost feels like the rifle is pulled forward. You know, when yeah. you when you shoot it. Uh, I'm thinking that I love I love the system. In fact, let me see the Creedmoor here. So. I love the fact that the buttstock folds down, you know, both for, you know, taking it for that a hike. A, that is a very thoughtful you know, feature, yeah. Like this. But what I'm thinking, you know, swing it around and you're, you're off and running. I'm thinking with this kind of a width, you know, I've got a dual sport motorcycle. It's got a rack on the back and it's got panniers and it's, it's only about this wide. So I think I would put some of that money towards building out some sort of a case with like foam protectors on it, your yeah. magazines and your ammo. So you had basically a flat rectangular pack. Right. Smaller version of like a tactical rifle bag, yeah. but something where you could maybe put other stuff on top of that um, all the while. Cause if you could imagine riding your dirt bike up into the hills and then hunting, yeah. you know, yeah. or, or whatever, I think that would be pretty awesome. But uh, yeah, I, I like the idea of additional magazines. You know, there's so much, there's so much that you could do. You could. I like the uh, Hogue, you know, over-molded rubber grip. Mm -hmm. I've got that on my AR-10. I've got it on both of my AR-15s. Check out the Ergo uh, grip. Those okay. are really nice as well. Yeah, I've got those. And here's the cool thing is if you really want to be on a budget and you've already got an AR, you can actually move a lot of the accoutrements over yes. here without, <laughs> without having to yep. spend the extra money. I yep. mean, that's right. compelling. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So here's the real question is what would all of you do. So if you had a Ruger Precision Rifle, you had your optics, where would you put three to five hundred dollars? Drop a comment in the video, drop a comment in the blog post, you can click through that. Uh, if you like what we're doing, by all means, please subscribe to my channel. And uh, we're going to have more information on the 6.5 Guys channel as well, so look there. And a lot more to the story. We're going to take this baby all the way out to, who knows, maybe even a mile. I don't know if I could hit anything at that distance, but I'm going to see how far I can go. Guaranteed you, you can. Yeah. Okay. You'd be surprised yeah. how, yeah. I would say easy, but it is doable. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll see. So I'm going to be in the reloading room. We're, we're going to show you guys new techniques. I'm going to use some bushing dies. We've got different bushings, and I'm going to... I'm going to turn all the knobs. I'm going to squeeze as much accuracy out of this as I can. I'm going to do some load development. You guys have some great charts and graphs, and dip. everybody has their own philosophy. So I'm going, to, I'm going to formulate my own. So stick around. Again, subscribing is the best way to make sure that you don't lose anything, and we'll see you guys next time.